10 of the fantasy football season. He has quarterback start suits every matchup. Thursday night, Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens. Both these quarterbacks have had great seasons for fantasy football owners. Joe Burrow last year, he was hurt early in the season out for the year, but this season, a bounce back year. And he just goes out there and he puts points on the board. So this week in a potential shootout, once again, going back to early in the season where both these teams and quarterbacks have big games. Joe Burrow's a no-brainer start. Lamar Jackson, he's been the best quarterback, in my opinion, this season in fantasy football with his running ability and now adding Deontay Johnson to the offense last week. He's just going to get his snap count up, pick up the playbook. And Lamar Jackson is a must-start weekly New York Giants at the Carolina Panthers, Munich, Germany. Daniel Jones, he's a borderline option for me in this one. Daniel Jones, it's been a tough season for him once again. And after the year, New York's most likely moving on from Daniel Jones, but this is a good matchup. And you got good weapons in Malik Neighbors, Wondell Robinson, Tyrone Tracy out of the backfield, and tight end Theo Johnson's emerged a little bit over the last couple weeks. So if you're in a pinch in two quarterback leagues, I think he's a borderline option. Bryce Young, Andy Dalton, whoever's gonna start this ball game, for this Panther team is a sit. Bryce Young the last couple weeks, he's actually gone out there and he's looked halfway decent at times, including last week, the 23-22 upset victory versus the Wall and Saints. But still, these guys are tough to trust. And this giant defense, I know they give up a lot of points, but they get to the quarterback amongst the league leaders in sacks, San Francisco 49ers at the Bucks. Brock Purdy locked in as a start. Christian McCaffrey most likely coming back in this ball game, even though I don't think he's going to get tons of touches, maybe 60, 70 percent of the touches out of the backfield. But San Francisco getting a little bit healthier. We know Ayuk's out for the season, but Kittle, he was banged up. He's back now at 100 percent almost. Devo Samuel as well. Last few weeks, he wasn't 100 percent. And I think Jawan Jennings will be back in this ball game as well. So Brock Purdy, the last few weeks, he's been getting the numbers up. And this week in a matchup at Tampa Bay, the defense can't stop anyone as Tampa Bay, giving up about 30 points a game over the last few weeks. He's an easy start. Baker Mayfield, the borderline option. Obviously, his weapons are limited. No Mike Evans, no Chris Godwin, who's out for the season. And he's dealing with guys like Jeremy McMillan. We'll see if he returns in this game. Sterling Shepard, Trey Palmer. So like I said, besides k and Rashard White, there's not a true top option in the passing game for this Tampa Bay Buck team at the receiver position and it's going to be tough for him to be consistent and put points on the board I know last week it was a nice comeback and tied the ball game up to go to overtime for Baker Mayfield but before that last drive the numbers really weren't there and this week a tougher matchup versus San Francisco he's a borderline option at best Atlanta Falcons at the Saints Kirk Cousins he's locked in he's got this offense down he's getting healthy as the season goes on and this Falcon team six and three on the year and this week it's a good matchup for the Saints the Saint defense last week in a plus matchup you would think would go out there and put in a good performance but they couldn't even stop the Panthers I think Cousins even if Drake London doesn't play in this game is a great start Derek Carter sit Derek Carr first two games of the year he was off to a running start with this New Orleans Saint team but the last couple weeks injuries and then last week returned and it wasn't a good performance and when Chris Olave I'm assuming is going to be out in this game he's an easy sit Denver Broncos at the Kansas City Chiefs well Nick believe it or not he's been one of the better options in fantasy football and consistent guys over the last month of the season is Bo Nick so right now we give him the starting nod but I'm gonna have a cautious on terms of his ceiling in this ball game. So I think Knicks, he could score anywhere from 15, 20 fantasy points in this game. We know he's a good running quarterback. He's Bo Knicks we've seen this season. And this Kansas City Chief team, surprisingly last week, a decimated offense of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers forced that game to overtime with a game tying drive. So I think Knicks, he can make things happen with his legs. I know in the passing game, his receivers aren't all that great, obviously. Besides Corwin Sutton, there's no other option, and he's going to have to make things happen with his legs and get that football to Corwin Sutton in this one. But like I said, Kansas City last week, they were leaky versus Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I think Bo Nix could go out there and be a back-end start option. Patrick Mahomes to start. Last week, a big ball game, one of his best of the season, if not the best for Patrick Mahomes. And him and DeAndre Hopkins were really hitting on big plays, and Travis Kelsey had another big game for this Kansas City Chief team. So Mahomes, he was getting that football down the field. And when he has a viable number one, two option at the wide receiver position, you could see the damage he could do. And that's exactly what him and Hopkins did. But obviously this week, a tougher matchup versus Denver Broncos coming to town. Even though they got torched for 41 points 
by the Baltimore Ravens. But the Broncos, they've played Mahomes decently over the last few seasons. But this week, definitely a start. Buffalo Bills at the Indianapolis Colts. Josh Allen locked in weekly as a starter. First quarterback off the board in most fantasy leagues. We'll see if Amari Cooper returns to the lineup. But Josh Allen, it just doesn't matter who's in there. With his running ability and his big arm and him spreading the football all over the field and his turnovers way down this season. He's easily a start weekly and this match at Indianapolis on the fast track. I think he has a big game. Joe Flacco was hit last week. It wasn't a pretty ball game for Joe Flacco, even though he kept his team in it for the most part was Flacco. But like I said, it was a tough matchup last week and this week I believe is a tougher matchup as well. Even though Buffalo gave up 27 points last week, this cold offense is nowhere near that Miami Dolphin offense. I think Joe Flacco, once again, is a sit. Pittsburgh Steelers at the Commanders. Russell Wilson, a borderline option. Wilson, he's looked good in the two starts he's had for this Pittsburgh Steelers team. But obviously, this is the toughest test to date. It's going to be for Russell Wilson. He beat the Jets and the Giants in his first two outings of the season. And now he's got the Commanders, one of the best teams in all pro football. And their defense has actually improved as the week's gone on as well. But Russell Wilson... He looked decent so far, like I said, versus two competitive defenses, but not all that great defenses. And this commander defense is a little similar, I believe, to those defenses as well. So the only thing with Russell Wilson, it's a road game where those two games were home games. And the other thing besides George Pickens and Fryermuth, there's not much going on in that passing game. Jaden Daniels, MVP candidate, rookie of the year, most likely this season. What a year it's been for him so far in the first nine weeks. And a guy who's got that running ability, and he was the Heisman Trophy winner for a reason last season in college football. So Daniels could do it all, even with not amazing weapons besides Terry McLaurin in that offense. He's going out there and putting numbers on the board. And this week, even with a tough defense coming to town, he's a must-start weekly. Minnesota Vikings at the Jaguars. Sam Darnold, the last few weeks, he's been locked in 20 or more fantasy points. When you got a wide receiver like Justin Jefferson... It's going to make things easier and points are going to be put on the board. And now with TJ Hawkinson back last week, even though he's on a snap count and Jordan Addison looking a little bit healthier this week, it's a great matchup at the Jacksonville Jaguars. They can't stop anyone. He's a star. Trevor Lawrence is it. Lawrence, he's been inconsistent once again this season. And this Jaguar offense is banged up. Kirk out for the season, broken collarbone. Brian Thomas not 100% with the ribs. And the running game, it's been tough to get anything going over the last few weeks. So with all those factors, he's an easy sit versus a good defense. Lincoln Patriots at the Bears, Drake May a start. Four starts this year, he's gone out there and he's putting points on the board is Drake May. And he's got a lot of mobility as well last week, rushing over 90 yards and he forced that ball game to overtime. The only thing with May, the turnovers have been an issue for him, but he's still putting up points on the board. And like I said, with his running ability, He's getting at least three to five points weekly running the football. So this week in a matchup at the Bears, which isn't great on paper, I still think May finds a way to put up some decent numbers for fantasy owners. Caleb Williams, a borderline option. A lot of people, they were thinking Williams. He was a top eight, top ten option weekly after two big games in a row in week five and week six. But the last couple weeks, he's come back down to earth with Caleb Williams. And his numbers haven't been great, obviously. He's still holding on to the football way too long. And you got great weapons in the offense, but he just can't get that football consistently down the field. And like I said, the last couple weeks, it's been bad for Caleb Williams. So this week on paper, which seems to be a good matchup, obviously, versus the Patriots. But this Patriot defense, I know it's a whole new coaching staff and everything, but rookie quarterbacks have had trouble versus defense over the last few years. So this week, Caleb Williams, to me, is a borderline option. And he has to prove he could go out there and put up numbers. Tennessee Titans at the Chargers. Mason Rudolph is it. This is a tough matchup. Jameis Winston last week couldn't get anything going versus defense. And that Tennessee, they just don't travel well this season. I know they won the ball game last week versus the Patriots. And Mason Rudolph had a pretty decent game. But this week at a good Charger defense, he's a sit. Justin Herbert is start. The last couple weeks, the numbers have gone up. And this offense now, they're starting to get guys involved and being more consistent. Lab mcconkey has been solid the last few weeks as the rookie wide receiver. Quinton Johnson last week had a big game over 100 yards found the end zone. And this week, I know it's not the greatest of matchups versus Tennessee secondary led by Sneed. But I think Justin Herbert could go out there, put points on the board. And now he's got a feel for this offense and for all the new weapons with the turnaround last season, losing a bunch of players to so bringing in all these new weapons. New York Jets at the Cardinals. I believe this ball game could be a shootout between these two teams. Aaron Rodgers, the last couple weeks, he's been locked in in terms of putting up fantasy points. And when you've got wide outs like Gary Wilson and Devontae Adams, it makes everything easier. And a good running back 
like Brees Hall out of the backfield. So this week, like I said, a good matchup, potential shootout, indoor game, fast track at Arizona. He's a start. Kyle Murray a start as well. I know Murray last week, the numbers were down. He didn't do much. And it was a tougher matchup versus Chicago Bears, but there's ways to exploit this New York Jet defense. And we've seen it for most weeks, especially in the last month, where the Jets have lost three out of four ball games. I think Murray bounces back with his running ability and still a decent arm, I believe, to get that football down the field. He's a start. Philadelphia Eagles at the Cowboys. Jalen Hurts, he was the second, third quarterback off the board in most fantasy weeks. And now with his receivers back over the last month of the year, he's putting up big performances and he's running the football a whole lot as well. So this week at the Cowboys, we're possibly Parsons returns in this ball game. I don't think it's going to make a difference because Jalen Hurts, he's having his way with Saquon Barkley in the backfield. It opens up a lot of things for this offense and this Cowboy team all season long, Parsons in or out, hasn't stopped anyone. He's a must start. Cooper rushes it, Dak Prescott out multiple weeks with the hamstring injury and he just wasn't doing much anyway with Dak Prescott to Cooper Rush in at quarterback like I said and believe it or not a few years ago when Dak was out with the hand injury Rush was 5-1 and one, but this Cowboy team isn't the same like it was a few years ago this is a tough matchup versus a Philly defense that's starting to get things going and he's an easy sit Detroit Lions at the Texans Sunday night this is a potential shootout between these two high-powered offense Jared Goff locked in as a start, he's been one of the more accurate and completion rate quarterbacks for pro football. And Jamison Williams is most likely returning as well off the two game suspensions. And when you got guys like Armand Ron St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Sam Laporta, even though it's been a bad down year for him, and then a backfield that David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, everything's easier. And Goff's going out there and he's just completing passes left and right this season. So this week at a Texan defense that's been leaky. And it's given up a lot of fantasy points to quarterbacks of late. He's a must start. CJ Stroud is start. Nico Collins possibly returning in this ball game. And that's going to be a huge boost, especially with Stefan Diggs out for the season. So if you get Collins back, I said in other videos, you got the offense back from last season with Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Dalton Schultz again more involved, Joe Mixon. Obviously a huge upgrade in the backfield over Pierce from last season. And then I think we really could see Stroud put points on the board even with Stefan Diggs out so this week in a potential shootout both these quarterbacks to start and now Monday night Dolphins at the Rams another game I think's a shootout indoor ball game with fast track always and this Dolphin offense two weeks in a row 27 points in both ball games so it's always looked pretty decent the last couple weeks this is a good matchup at the Rams where their defense hasn't been all that great this season and I believe it's gonna be a high scoring game so two is a start with great weapons like Tyreek Hill Obviously, Devon A. Chain, Jerry Waddle, it's definitely been a struggle for him this season. But in this ball game, two was a start. Matthew Stafford a start. Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua back in the lineup. I know Puka got tossed in that ball game last week, throwing a punch at the Seahawks. But Stafford still found the way. He still had over 20 fantasy points. And once again, Demarcus Robinson is really emerging. He's a great number three wide receiver with that one on one coverage and beating that coverage. So he's a start, Stafford, this week. So that's quarterback starts it every matchup for week 10 of the fantasy football season.